There are a couple ways you can go about creating a new blank document, the least of which, as we learned in an earlier training video, was to simply open up Microsoft Word. When you opened it, the default was the startup window. From there, you can go ahead and click on the blank document template, and it'll take you to a new blank document. But if you did what I did, I bypassed that by unchecking in the options of Word to start up in the startup screen, in which case it took me right to the blank document here. In any case, once you have it open, you don't have to close out of it and reopen it to generate a new blank document. Instead, with it open, you can just come up here and click on the File tab, go backstage, down to New, and there you go, blank document. Go ahead and click on it, or you can choose one of these other fine, fancy templates. But let me click and drag and scroll back up. We'll stay with blank document number two. There you go, document two. Or you can come down here with Word open, one of its corresponding Word buttons, and right click on it to get the jump list and come up and left click on the shortcut to Word 2016 and it opens up document 3 and it'll keep doing that numbering it sequentially document 4, 5, 6 and so on but that doesn't matter because once you save your document you can go ahead and rename this generic name to something that's pertinent well to what you're writing about in the document below so let me go ahead and close out of these last two of the three documents we opened by clicking on the X or I can come down here and right click on the corresponding button and it's called a button because when you click on it it acts like a button that it minimizes document 2 down to the taskbar. When I click on it again, it restores it. So let me go ahead and right click. And in the jump list, left click on close window. And we're back to our first document, document 1. Now notice that the cursor is flashing not in the upper left hand corner, but just over and down. About how far? Well, if you look at your rulers here, the horizontal and vertical, okay, if you can't see them, let's come up here and click on the view tab go to the show group and check ruler. If I uncheck it, they disappear. Check it, they reappear. And you'll notice that you have your shaded area and the white. The shaded area are your margins or non-working areas. So if you go from one over to zero, that's where the cursor's at. So I can't work in that part of the document because that's my left margin. And then as far as vertically, we go from one down to zero, that's one inch, so I can't work from that point down within the document. And you can see over to the right, I've got my right margin, it's one inch from six and a half to seven and a half. When I click and drag the scroll bar down to the bottom, I've got my bottom shaded area, the margin from nine to 10. So top, bottom, left, and right, they're all one inch margins. So wherever my cursor's at, that's where it's gonna be dumping the text into when I start typing. So let's go ahead and type in the name of my company, Dreamforce LLC. And then when I wanna to get to the next line to type in something like a new thought, or in this case, our slogan, which comes after our company name, hit enter. And you'll notice that when I hit enter, it takes it down about a line and a half. It's not single spacing, it's one and a half spacing. And that's the default for every new document that I create, but I can change the defaults and I can show you how you can do that in a later training video. But let's go on with what we've got here. And we'll type in, Our slogan, ho, 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 have we got the right Christmas toys for you. And then when I'm done with that, I can hit enter and maybe hit enter again so I can get more spacing between the company's name and the slogan and what this document's about or regarding us. And if you make a mistake and you're like, oops, I didn't mean regarding, it's supposed to be about us, and then you can go ahead and, well, as you can see when I move my mouse around, you get that uppercase I. It's called the I-beam. Wherever you place that, like if I click at the beginning in front of the R, that's where the cursor goes. So from there, I can hit the delete key because it deletes everything to the right-hand side of the flashing cursor, or if I want to delete everything that's behind it, then I can go ahead and click after the G and hit the backspace key on the keyboard. And then go ahead and start typing wherever the cursor's at. And you'll notice that it adds the text, but also pushes everything to the right side of the cursor over to make way for the new characters here, or letters. And then I can go ahead and click after it, hit enter again. And in fact, if I want to be able to jump right down to, like, let's say the three inch on the vertical ruler, I can't click there because it won't take me. And the reason being is because I don't have any available lines. How do I get available lines? Well, every time you hit the enter key, it creates that line. 
so it's open now so if I come back up here I can click there because I already hit enter and it opened up that line and in fact to get more technically accurate let me come up here on the home tab go to the paragraph group and click on show high codes and it reveals all the codes within the document for example every time you hit the spacebar it adds a little dot when I turn on the show codes and for every time I hit the enter key it adds a paragraph marker or what I refer to as a line that I could place the cursor in so if I want to get down here and type in something about down at the three inch vertical ruler mark then I have to go ahead and hit enter quite a few times to get down there don't I and I can hit the backspace key to go back up and it gets rid of the paragraph markers so I can't go back down there unless I hit enter again to open up those paragraphs or lines now they're known as paragraphs here not what we learned in the English class where two or three sentences make up a paragraph but according to Microsoft Word every time you hit the enter key that's going to generate a new paragraph so how many paragraphs do I have in my document let's go ahead and count them up one two three four five paragraph markers so five paragraphs and that helps me to identify how much spacing I have in between these paragraphs what the default is because if I turn them off I may have one or two and if I'm trying to click here and I can't click in between the H and the paragraph marker that's because I only have one paragraph and it's one and a half spacing we'll go over that a little bit more in detail but that's one way to help us out to show the codes to find out where we can place our cursor and how many paragraphs and what constitutes a paragraph and more importantly later on when it comes to formatting like entire paragraphs where it has maybe 10 20 30 sentences or more again depending upon if you just have one code here you can format the entire paragraph and change the alignments in a single click but I digress let's keep it simple so we've got our spaces here if I come up and click in between Dreamforce and I have one space and I hit the spacebar now I've got two dots two spaces and I can add quite a few more and instead of hitting the backspace key I can come up here on the quick access toolbar and say that I want to undo it click on the undo button and I'm back to where I started with just one space now that's also important because with some of the font types if you change it like from Calibri and the font looks a little bit tight together so it doesn't look like there's a space in between some words then you can go ahead and turn on your show hide codes to see if you actually have a little space there and by the way the default font for every new document that I create in Word if I come up here on the home tab to the font group it's going to be Calibri I can go ahead and change that and update well whatever I want to from Calibri to maybe Times New Roman Arial and even change the font size but if I want it a different font size for every new document like always to be 12 I'll show you how you can change the defaults for that in a later training video but again trying to keep it simple here as I introduce this to you and this becomes a little bit annoying if you don't want to see the codes of course you can go ahead and turn them off and that way if you're not used to it you don't get confused with what you actually type versus what's a code In any case let's go ahead and move on let's go down to where I can click I got a paragraph marker there so it allows me to put the cursor there and let's see what happens when I type in three or four sentences that when it gets over to the far right hand side where it hits the right margin at six and a half what words gonna do to those sentences instead of cutting it off it'll actually wrap it around that is if I don't hit the enter key on the keyboard when I get to the end it'll do what's called a word wrap so that way it doesn't generate a new paragraph when I get to the end by me hitting the enter key but once I hit it it'll automatically say okay we got too much it can't fit on this line let's go ahead and put that onto the next line for example now you can see I've got to the end here or close to the margin that if I type in anything else it's close enough that it's going to wrap it around as opposed to me going at the end saying well I'm at the end let me go ahead and hit enter to get to the next line so let me go ahead and type in the next word which is going to be toys t-o-y and automatically without hitting the enter key it sees that it has no more space at the end when it hits the right margin and puts it on the next line so let's go ahead and finish typing and I'm getting to the end here so I got my next sentence and type in my name Kurt wraps it around without me hitting the enter key now to prove my point let's go ahead and turn on our show codes to show you that I didn't hit the enter key when I got to the end of the line 
but Word automatically took care of it when it hit the right hand margin at six and a half inches here, as you can see up here on the ruler. Come up here on the Home tab to the Paragraph group and turn it on. And do you see a paragraph marker at the end of this line, or that one, or that one? Nope. So we've got a total of four lines that's included in this paragraph. So from that paragraph marker to that one, everything in between is a paragraph. And from that one to that one, everything in between, which is just about us, is a paragraph. And so we have a total of one, two, three, four, five paragraph markers, five paragraphs. Not the way that we talked about in the English class, but the way that Microsoft Word sees them. And to just give you a sampling of why it's important that you don't hit the Enter key at the end of your lines and let Word wrapping it for you, here's one example that when you double click a word, it selects the word. If you triple click, it selects the entire paragraph. That means between that marker and that marker, it selects everything with the triple click. So if I came at the end of each one of these and hit enter and hit enter, then when I come into one and I triple click, it doesn't select all four lines because it just selects everything between that marker and this one right here because it sees everything in between those two as one paragraph. So let me go ahead and hit undo once, hit it twice. Now we're back to four lines in one paragraph. Now having said that, if you do want to be able to break your lines without breaking a paragraph, for example, let me go ahead and turn off my codes here. If I want to be able to have the last few words here on the next line without actually entering in a paragraph by hitting the enter key, you can do what's called a soft return. So instead of hitting enter, hold down the shift key and then hit the enter key on the keyboard and that's a soft return meaning that it forces the text to wrap to the next line but without breaking its link to the same paragraph for formatting purposes. So if I double click, I get the word, triple click. Does it select the line that's above it? Yes, because it still considers that as part of the paragraph even though it's on the next line because we did a soft return. Of course, we do have that extra ugly space there. Let me click before the W, hit the backspace key. And then let's go ahead and see what the soft return code looks like as opposed to the paragraph code. Again, Home tab, Paragraph Group, click on Show Codes, and it's right there, that little arrow that's turning in on itself. So at that point, it said, go to the next line. We forced it on to the next line. That's a soft return. It still considers that a part of the paragraph. So everything between the last paragraph marker and the one above it, including the soft return, is a paragraph. So if I go ahead and click before it, hit the Delete key, and then it takes it, pulls it back up. Let me hit the space bar a couple of times. Looks good. And then let me turn off the codes. Next, if you type in a misspelled word, like I want to type in this, but instead I type in capital T-I-H-S, when I hit the space bar, Word will do what's called an autocorrect. When I hit the space, it'll tell Word to check the word behind it to see if it's been misspelled. And if it's been misspelled from what it searches for in its database, It'll go ahead and find out what it thinks it is and replace that with the correct spelling. So when I hit the space bar, voila, you see that? Automatically corrected it from T-I-H-S to T-H-I-S. Now if you're like, wait a second, it shouldn't be this. That's actually the name of my friend who lives down the street, T-I-H-S. Then go back over the word that it just automatically corrected and you'll see this little thin blue line. I don't know if you can see it, but it's underneath the T there. Go ahead and hover over that then you get the autocorrect option smart tag that you can go ahead and click on its corresponding drop down arrow and you can say all right let's change it back to tihs or stop automatically correcting tihs to this or you can actually look at the autocorrect options when you click on it opens up a new window and when you type in tihs it says down below, anytime you type this in, it'll replace that with what's within this column, and it's THIS. And we'll talk about this in a later training video, how you can customize this and say, okay, look, let me delete it. Let me go ahead and put something else in its place. Let me click cancel and leave that for a different training video. But to keep it simple for this one, it's enough to just go ahead and hover over that blue line, click on it, and say, change it back or stop automatically doing this, and then go ahead and continue on typing. And what's hard to miss is this red squiggly line, because according to Word, this is not spelled correctly. So that's its misspelling indicator. We'll talk about that more in a later training video. 
In any case, let's go ahead and come up here and hit undo so it can go back to THIS or I can go ahead and delete it and retype it in again. Oh, and one last thought. If this is something that you don't want to have it misspelled and see red squiggly lines every single time, you can add it to the Word 2016 dictionary, but that's another training video. So let's go ahead and finish our thought here and look forward to those other training videos to get more details about working with our documents and say, once we're finished and we like our document, you want to make sure you save it. So watch the next training video because otherwise, if something happens to your computer, you may lose your work. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.